anti-Semitic culture war flourishes. Despite long-term educational outreach efforts from Holocaust survivors around the world, recently, Second Life's virtual synagogue was defaced with a swastika. Deniers continue to spread their agenda amid the dwindling survivor population. Fanny Starr bravely shares the details of her life with us so we can record, so we can be reminded, and so we can be enlightened and hear firsthand what really happened. Being able to film this preserves as a document of time an undeniable record of the past from the first-hand experience of someone who survived it. We are grateful to be able to be enlightened by the past so that we can be sure to never let humanity fall to such deprivation. Nazi atrocities brought horror to all humankind, and our being able to listen and learn from Fanny Starr means that we have a chance to never let this happen again, and crimes against each other can abate. For more than 30 years, survivor Fanny Starr has shared the details of her imprisonment at Lot's Ghetto, whose residents were forced to work in slave labor in factories that manufactured uniforms, munitions, and other supplies for the Nazis. In 1944, the Lot's Ghetto was liquidated, and its remaining residents were shipped to Auschwitz. Fanny later learned that she was one of only a thousand survivors of the ghetto whose residents once totaled 150,000. Then on to Auschwitz, Bergen-Belsen, Ravensbrück, and others. After more than 30 years of public appearances, co-hosting a lecture series in Second Life has enabled Fanny Starr to share her experiences with the online community's 18 million members. Through the legacy of her recollections and the brave recollection of others, one can attempt to identify the faith that humanity can learn from its mistake. Our ability to film today's talk also means that we can reach many more people and use Second Life as a true platform for knowledge dissemination. Our filming, a machinima, of Fanny Starr's words and experiences that can be appreciated by many means there is hope that millions of people will be brought to understanding what really happened not so long ago. Second Life technology can reach a broad base of people, something a real-life classroom cannot achieve, yet we are in an intimate setting here and respectful of such. You have been through so much and survived so much. Thank you for being here today. Thank you, Fanny Starr. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It's wonderful to see you. You have been through so much and have survived so much. I have a, a question, and I'd like yeah. to ask you, if you could travel the world all over and give one message regardless of country, religion, race, or ethnicity, what would that be? Peace on earth, no more wars. We had it not, no destruction of humanity because what's going on now in Iraq and the other countries, just innocent people getting destructed. And after that, we are the victims, Israel, like the other day, just with blue sky, just start throwing bombs and everything else. So once and for all, let's stop that animosity against humanity. That's so important. That's, that is such an important message because we as humans are hurt so much by the destruction we bring to each other. Mm. You certainly have witnessed uh, a great deal. And now I'd like to ask you a question um, that concerns President Roosevelt. How did you feel about President Roosevelt's response to the Holocaust during World War II? I tell you the truth. Mm -hmm. I was, from the beginning, I just didn't know I was distracted. After that, when my husband took over, you know, in the politics, 
area. He said that Roosevelt could do more, not let that catastrophe, because mm -hmm. that time he had a secretary of Hall. He was an anti-Semite. People came mm. like Kente, the, what the name of the artist, the Kente, no, Amy, I forgot, <laughs> after so many years. And he came and pleaded with Hall, and Hall told him to wait. He waited for hours and hours and hours, and he ignored him. After Roosevelt saw the catastrophic thing, we could prevent it. Definitely we could. He saw she could bombard it. All the rail trains, what people were shifted to one place to the other. All the many, many things they could do it and they just ignored it. They didn't do it. I don't know why. He was a little bit anti saber I would say it. <laughs> Eddie Cantor. I, I, Cantor. You know, I was yeah. talking about uh, Eddie Cantor. He was sitting over there. He was pleading. Metal. You could it do more. Yeah, it could have been so different. Then, yeah. He was ignored. I cannot <laughs> remember everything. <laughs> I tell you, so many years passed. You know, one act by one, where you say one act by one person can change so much. That certainly was um, a critical, critical moment that he, that he did not step up to, uh, to help. Uh, yeah. Pope Pius the Twelfth yeah. and, and the Catholic Church are now pushing to uh, make him a saint. Yeah. Could we have Shame some? on them. Shame on them. They shouldn't. He had bloody hands. He was the, in the Hitler Jugend. And he tried to justify it. I, he was guilty. All the Jug, uh, Hitler Jugend went and broke in stores in Germany. They just crystallized the all Hitler Jugend. And he would say uh, he's guilty. I blamed Rome just because they shouldn't make him a big pope. I feel, I love the pope what passed away. He had a heart. He was too a victim of circumstances like I was. Mm. Yeah, because, you know, when my husband was in a one camp, they called Posen, and they were brought in all the priests, you know, the all intellectual priests. And they were just tortured like we. And my husband, I asked my husband where they disappeared. He said, one night they just, everybody was gone from the barracks. We didn't know where <gasps> they are. <sighs> yeah. Some people, yeah. Some people, it, it's, it, it's amazing to think that there are actually some people who think that the Holocaust is a hoax. It yeah. is it be beyond comprehension <laughs> that uh, that people would think that, and that there are deniers in the world. What 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 are some of your reflections on that? Especially since you actually lived through it. You know. Recently, probably you heard it and read about it, and was like Hungary denied it. Oh. It was no Holocaust. And so, matter of fact, was, I have the, a movie what Hungarian participated that worked hand by hand with the Nazis. This was Alfred Hitchcock movie. Oh. Yeah. And he said uh, he was born in this and this year, and he was drafted in this and this year, and he, they were Hungarians. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah. and, a, and, and a cast of 12 million. Um, yeah. un, unbelievable. Mm -hmm. and, and so much was taken away, not only to be told 
that what you went through uh, did not happen yeah. after you had experienced it. And I'm sure that you have met people who who can't, I think, comprehend the depravity and the it's, uh, horror. Yeah. You know, that, when I'm going to school and just, I will not go. I would say 16, 17 years old, they're more comprehended. And they're asking questions. How did you survive? How could you, day by day, what you went through? I said, you know what? I didn't care if I die now. I couldn't take no more pain. I was stroking the typhoid, and I really don't care if I, I beg to God, that's enough. Take at, me. At that point, because, you must have been through yeah. everything. Yeah. And you see, my. Go ahead, Cookie. Go I'm, ahead. I was going to say that you went back to Germany afterwards. Did you? Yes, I did. Yes. And I went. Uh, tell. Can you tell us about that, especially about what happened to your to your identity? Our identity, I tell you what. You mean change of names? That's, yes. That didn't, do, that didn't do it. Some other people. I'm sorry to say it. This, my fellow Jews did it. You see, people money hungry. And there, we went actually not to Germany. That time was we went to Israel. And we came back from Israel. Our names were changed. My name was not Fanny. My name was Fella. My mm. birthday was changed. My husband's birthday was changed. The whole thing, we, myself and my husband, we suffered. After that, we came to the United States and we tried to change it to his really name. I, matter of fact, I have a picture when we were in Yad Vashem. And he found his little town, very small town. He was smiling. His face was from one end to the other. After that, when we came together, he was crying. He said, why? They took oh. away my family. Again. Why? Again. Yeah. Over and over. So, I tell you, when I can just talk for hours, just coming back from Israel to Germany, in B and Italy. We got dropped, going in the train. How much few dollars we had, the, you know, the pickpockets my husband and took the few dollars. I had a few dollars, about $50 we lived over there. We have to pay people to bribe, to go overboard to Austria. We didn't oh, eat mm. my, what, a few dollars we just spared to feed my oldest daughter. And we really, till we arrived in Austria for four days, we were not legal, go over the border. And after that, we just, somebody give us some food. We were released. I started here in the United States too. Nobody knew. I just put a big pot with parsley mm. and cooked the whole house and asked people, ask me what I'm cooking. I said, a pot of wood and parsley. We take so much for granted. Yeah. We really do. Oh, Fanny, do, do you think that that Holocaust awareness makes yeah. a difference to people? <laughs> I hope so. You know, we talking our heart out. We just talking to everybody and anybody. Some, the only one beautiful people is the Bible chapter. They believe in us. They just believe that doing a lot for Israel. And I just cherish these people, what they're doing for the Israel. Matter of fact, I have here 
two lovely ladies, their close friends. One lady, she, when I was so deadly sick, she was every single day in my bedside. Because so what can know. I tell you? This is the only people I just... The other people just believe in this belief. It's hard to... You know, you cannot go in with you with your mind to the heart and how to express if they believe. There is a, was a statement from someone in the audience, and you know that we do have a live audience here. Go and ahead. A, a Go woman ahead. From, from Holland, yeah. uh, whose they were, name is uh, Jojo Dahara. Yes. Um, Go ahead, Fanny. Uh, you know, the Holland people just suffered just like we did. And I was, I would say, about 10 years ago in mm -hmm. Holland. I felt it like I'm home. I f was greeted so lovely. From, you know, strangers, we start talking. And I went to Israel, and I met uh, Dutch people. They were just beautiful. They suffered a lot, too. Yes, they did. In the Netherlands, of course, they have uh, the voice of Anne Frank. I was so over there. How did you feel being in, in Anne Frank's home? I tell you, comparing what we went through, she was in a paradise. Because mm. she was, okay, she was hidden. She couldn't get out. They didn't have the freedom. No, comparing, I just said to myself, gosh, I wish I'd be here. And have my whole family together. Compared just, to what you, know, you went through, oh my God! Uh, she went. She died in Bergen-Belsen. No, she was not so long, like we were. She was just a short. She died, her and her sister. I don't. In short months being over there, because I take from loneliness, and she was fat good. We were already in the ghetto dead till we arrived in Bergen Belgium. We were really dead. We were skeletons. We were just skin and bones. And you when must she have, looked, yeah. go ahead, she looked pretty good. And the time where I was, I was just amazed. You know, I met that lady what, here in Denver from the, oh, mm -hmm. what they call it, no, no, organization. And I talked to her and I just told her, I was in Holland. You did a good deed for them. No, she didn't suffer like I did. She was not a skeleton like I did. You fed her every single day. She could look to the window. She could have papers and a pen, write her biography. We will not have that luxury, what she did. No, you didn't have no. the luxury to, to write or to record. No. Or, or no. to have, be able to pour your heart out to no a, a, a diary. No way. If you, you know, could but, have, what would what do you think you would have said, Fanny? What I would say, what it's hard to tell what humanity, how vicious mm. and ugly can be. And they pick just one race, Jews. Why did the, you know I p spoke once to a college called Regis College. I just told mm -hmm. a little book, better go here to the reporter. I said, why we were chosen? I talked to a lot. Priests, name it, rabbis. Nobody could say why. I asked him why. Why is we were just the victims of circumstances? Can somebody tell me? Till today I didn't have... No answer for nobody. And we, were the cho and we were the chosen people. Supposedly, the chosen people. And we were tortured in a, such a heinous crime, in such a heinous way. Not chosen to die or not chosen to sacrifice as no. much as... 
No. Yes. Like yes, you. We have. Can everybody see the pictures now what they're showing to you? You see like this picture what you see it now on the monitor. My husband after the liberation, he was placed in a home. The mm -hmm. Americans over there was he, that lady from the house, she brought the pictures. She show gave it to him. That little kids were guests and they didn't the crematorium burn broke and they were not burnt. They were like oh. pi piles of kids outside for quite a while. They he Oh you know, and after that she told my husband that uh, this was a Christmas, a Weihnachten Karte. That's mean a card in German. This is what they put a holiday card. And they left and they had fun. He brought a lot of pictures. Matter of fact, I found the other day I was looking through, I was looking for a certain picture of my aunt from Brazil. I don't know where mm -hmm. I placed it. And I found another picture and I give it to Helen. It just breaks. Each time you see that picture, breaks my heart. Like the, a jewel he wore his talik, his, uh, and they start burning his pace, and they opened his crotch, <sighs> and they took everything out, and they burned him alive, and his talis. Burned him alive. You know, it's it, it not just so much pain for you, and so much pain for the Jewish people, but it's so much pain for, for everyone, because it happened somehow. It happened, and we have got to be brought to bear to never let people do this to other people again. The, these pictures burning someone alive, the conditions that you lived they through. They didn't care. You know, they had fun. They were smiling. They did so many. Like, you have oh. to go and dig your own grave, and they told you you have to jump from one to the other, and after that he didn't do it, they took, immediately shot him, and he fell in his own grave, what he dug for himself. You know, how do you feel about, let's say, someone like Rush Limbaugh, Rush Limbaugh, who is actually like a, 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 a radio personality today, yeah. him singing, I am a Nazi on the radio. I tell you what, I don't blame him. I blame the government. Why they don't take him off in the air? Close him. Don't have a voice for the world. Don't spread poison. That, that that is in in a way you know you're not allowed to to shout fire in a crowded movie theater right mm -hmm. yeah. being able to say this on public radio and <laughs> and still have I, a job i tell you what if i will have power and i be not punished i will take a gun and get, kill myself if i would not go to jail for it no don't don't do that Huh? Yourself? No. Yeah, him. Oh, him. Not me. Why should I be the victim? He's, he should be the victim. You know, He's, invited to this event today are uh, Rabbi Franklin of the yeah. uh, BMHB congregation and other observers. Also invited here and here today are a woman named, that I'd like to introduce, Deborah Horning, who is here as uh, Stacy Silverblade, and her social anthropology class, which is made up of some exemplary young women who are 14, 15, and 16 years old. I'd like to ask Stacy if she has any questions or if her class has any questions to show what a powerful 
media platform Second Life is Fantastic. that Fanny can be speaking and that Stacy can also be inviting her class to this important proceeding. Hi, Mrs. Starr. This is I'm Debbie. Fine, um, how <laughs> good. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I got some students here that want to ask you some questions. Is that okay? By all means. Hi, um, you said that you, while in the concentration camp, just didn't care whether you lived or not. I'm wondering yeah. how you regained that, the will to live after the liberation. I tell you, it was tough, you know. Right after the liberation, I was struggling. With, I was still sick with typhoid. And I was still not myself. After that, I became like a mental case. I was really sitting in a corner and writing and said, where's my mom, where's my dad, and where's my brothers and sisters and everybody else. No, my younger sister, she was much stronger like I am. She grabbed me by that suit, what I had, that striped suit, and, and she started shaking me and smacked me over the face. He said, my name was not Ferry was Fella. Actually, that's my original name, F-A-L-A. -A. <clears throat> and we start, sh I start shouting and crying. And she said, mm. accept that. That is it. That is our life. They're gone. We don't have nobody. Just me and you. And after a few months later, my brother came. And it was the biggest joy. When he came, jumped down from the truck, and we greeted each other, and he went, left right away the same day. He went back to Poland because somebody told him uh, he can get education in Poland. And he was steady to be a diplomat. Unfortunately, he passed a few years ago here. And he met his lovely wife. She was a doctor. She was an endocrinology doctor. So, we were still apart. He lived in Germany. I lived here in the United States. My sister lived in Israel. We always were apart. I was just, couldn't take that. We talk a lot, probably every week on the phone. I'm talking to my sister every week on the phone. Say hello, how you been, and that's it all. Just hear the voices was pleasant. Mm -hmm. They both, yeah. Okay, did I answer your question? Yes, you did, and I have another student here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, hi, hello, Mister. Um, my name is Sarai, and I'm a junior. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. My my question is: um, after being liberated, what was the hardest part of starting over again? I tell you was very hard. I didn't know, shall I go left or shall I go right? I didn't know who I am, what to do with myself and with my sister. We just were lost people. Took a while till you put yourself together. And after a while, I just joined a group and that group helped a lot, and I met my husband. That was, we meant to chat. Actually, he was dating one of my friends, and I came to the parade in his life. <laughs> and we have beautiful 56 years of marriage till he passed away. Were you happy? Yes. Did you? Are there more questions from your class? They're just wonderful, Stacy. Thank you. I have a couple more girls here. Hi, I'm Jessica, and I'm a freshman. Um, I was just wondering whether, after the Holocaust, you think the human race learned something, and whether we've responded adequately to genocide in general. Oh, this is <laughs> and that question I'm lost. <laughs> Let me rephrase it for you. Huh? I want to know if anything's changed. Oh, change? It changed. Yeah, yeah, you know, there's a lot of changes in my life. No, from the Holocaust. 
Oh, from the house since then? And from the genocide. Oh, what they did? Oh. Yes. Um, oh, I'm just wondering if, if you think genocide, because of the Holocaust, we have reacted to genocide better. Listen, you know, it was time being just seeing, being the camps like Auschwitz. Seeing that pile of children, the orchestra playing to the, when you went to the guest chambers. You saw so many things, and after that, when I saw Irma Grete, mm. she was the SS lady, and she was a murderer. She used to go around with a whip, like a horse whip, and whipping people. And sometimes that whip just twisted around your neck and they choke you to death. Not too long ago I watched, was biography on TV, I think it was 52, that took it off from the air and they showed Irma Grace and that said that she was a SS lady and she was in Auschwitz and she was in bergen -Belsen. You know what? I felt like my whole body froze like an icicle. I became so hysterical and I just couldn't cry. No, everything clamped in me and I say, my gosh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. How the could such a murder such a many innocent people that didn't commit no crime against humanity? There, there is a question from the audience yeah. that is relates to that. And again, uh, Jojo Dahara, and she's currently in the Netherlands, is asking, was there any, anyone in the camp, any of the soldiers that sympathized with the Jews and anyone who actually questioned their superiors' orders? Was there any well, German soldiers who, who, were, who were brave and decent enough to do that? I tell you, Hitler was such a powerful best, I would say, sorry. He could, there were, there were just maybe a handful of humans what they sympathized. Mm. Oh, but the rest of it, they were just cold-blooded murder. They had no sympathy. I tell you a small thing. I remember when we were in the ghetto, we came from the big... The ghetto was outskirt from my town, Lodz, L-O-D-Z, Lodz. And they took my father. And he was beaten so unhumane. He, my father was in the business, what, leather business. Mm -hmm. Hot leather. And they want to find out where were the big factory and where were these things where we can find it. I'm telling you, when they throw out, this was in a church. They keep the Gestapo headquarters. And when they just throw them out with the steps, and how I never believe a dead man will live another two hours. Myself and my older sister were perished in the in Treblinka, and my mom we picked up pieces. We just tie to put his head together and bandaged it in cold water. How he made it. I think his strong will, like my will, is strong to survive all obstacles in my life. It's, it's, it's thrilling <laughs> to hear you talk, and so important as well. Um, I'm going to ask if there are any questions from, uh, from 
Deborah and her class. I'm sure the students are are, are very moved right now hearing hearing this live. It's an incredible experience. And again, I have in my class freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. And it really is an experience for them to hear this in this manner. And I do have two more students here, so I'm going to let the next one speak. Hi, Miss Starr. My name is Dara. I'm a freshman. Um, I was wondering if you share Anne Frank's ideals that people are really good at heart, and if you could tell us why or why not. Why I went down? Why, no, are people good at heart? Um, I'm good at heart. Okay. I, but I met in Germany. I just didn't see nobody good at heart. I tell you what, I went once on a trip to see my brother. When I walked the streets, I saw German uh, lady. Either I, he was my assessment. He was my SS lady. I got beaten from her. I came once for beaten so unbearable. I will co confess I had a diamond what I swallow from my mom. This was in Milhausen. And I, we were hungry. And I tried to bribe her. I was so unhuman being. If I'm alive, it's amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. If I made it. It is amazing, and it is wonderful and amazing. You know, another thing. Because you have to say this. You've got to be here, Fanny. Yeah. I hope I be another 120 here and tell everybody that story. <laughs> I'm 88 years old, my dear lady. This is, this is, this is forever. This is immortal. <laughs> and what do you think? I, I really love the question that this young lady poised to you. There is, yeah. of course, blackness in the hearts of, of, of people. And you experience that firsthand like no one else. But there is also goodness. I would I say so. Not... Yes. Maybe today the Germans finally came after so many years to start teaching in the schools. was a time being they were not allowed to talk about the Holocaust. Since the Chancellor, she allowed to open the schools and teach them. So, I, she has a good heart. And I spoke to a gentleman not too long ago. And he said, you know, the change now, we have synagogue, we have everything. I said, regardless how good they are, my paint will never go away what they did to humanity. I'm just not the only one. Six million perished. I'm just lucky I got pick me and I will talk to people and tell him, I'm a person what I'm feeding homeless people for years. I'm cooking a meal, it's left over. I said, Helen, you will not eat, I will not eat it. Packing up, Helen is my driver, and she's taken. Last, was so cold, bitter cold, outside here in Denver, and I had a meal, and I hate to throw it away. I said, Helen, I go put it together. You go ahead, buy a bread and take it downtown. She couldn't find no home. She went block to block to block. Finally, she found an elderly man. And she came home. Ma, you don't know what I'm going through when I see that homeless people. She took once, once of my friend what she expressed, she said, it. why they don't go to work? And she, my Helen and myself, we went, took a ride downtown, and she showed it. And after that, her image and her heart changed around. You, and you, you have 
truly given and and lived and given and passed on this great responsibility of of people to educate and to keep moving forward in a progressive manner that which is our strength as people i understand that um stacy has a couple of more students that have some have questions some Yes, I do. I have two more. Hi, my name is Julia. Um, I was wondering that after seeing the things that you've seen and being aware of what's going on in the world today, if you have any faith in humanity and the direction we're taking. You see, now we have unnecessary war and our government sends it the soldiers. Each time I hear that soldier died. It's, we should get out from over there. Dead, let them do fight their own battle. Not be America, not the policeman for the mm -hmm. whole world. And this is an element what you cannot convince them. They just believe in one thing, in their religion. They will not want to go forward, and they don't want to go backward. And they believe in them. Sorry to killing young people. Just pity. It's so heartbreaking. It is so heartbreaking because it hurts them to kill as well. Yeah, that kind of people are killing. They damage, have no. Damage. They don't have no heart. They don't care. They don't care. They believe in just Muslims. Um, I don't condemn the religion. I condemn the killings, the beliefs. Don't kill nobody. You want to believe? I'm Jewish. I believe in it. But I don't go convinced. You have to believe my belief. Neither other denominations. Everybody has their sure. own belief. Sure. Do you... Um did Stacy have another a question from her students? These are so moving, what, uh, what, what these young ladies and young women are thinking and feeling and able to communicate here today. Thank you so much. Yes, Mrs. Starr, we have one more, and thank you so much for your help with this. Your answers are so moving to the girls. Um, hi, Mrs. Starr. Um, my name is Lizzie, and I'm a freshman. And I read the book Night, and they, they talk hear. a lot about losing faith. And I was wondering if there was a time when you ever like lost your hope or didn't believe in your faith anymore because you were so broken. I tell you, from the beginning, after the war, I became, I didn't believe in nothing. I couldn't comprehend it, how people could kill people with no reason. I became an atheist. I didn't believe in Mm -hmm. I said, I said to God, sometimes I said, you know, you're not available, you're not, you could, how could you see tearing people into little pieces, take a baby and just mesh them against the brick wall and your brain. How did you hold on to your belief? How did you find your faith again? I'm more now like uh, my husband. He believed in it, very much so. He didn't miss a Shabbos, that's a Saturday, go to the synagogue. He mm -hmm. used to go to the synagogue. He was a big believer. And he was a truly Zionist. Before the war, he belonged to a group and I belong after uh, doing before the war, the same group. This was like, uh, maybe, maybe it's not familiar to him. He told us in 1933, leave Europe. Who could afford it? Who could afford it? Left. They went to England, they went to Australia, different countries. We couldn't, b my father was, didn't want to go. My mom wanted to leave to Brazil. 
My father didn't want to. We had business. We made a nice living. We had brothers and sisters, and my mom had two brothers, so we remained in Poland. And so you found your faith in a way through your family. My, I'm swallowing a few tears before I go into that question. Now I'm more like an observer. I'm going mm -hmm. to the synagogues. I'm going around the holidays. And now my last loss, what I lost in my life, to myself. That's it really. I'm going still to the synagogue. And I still pray for my people, for every, for every humanity, not just picking my people. I pray for the whole world be peace on earth. I think that's something that we all should do because we all are truly in this as one, Fanny. And it's remarkable that, that you, after everything you've been through, have truly come to this and are able to tell us, and this is something we should all do, is pray for, for all of us, for all of humanity. If, um, hey, Debra. Some, someone oh, in, her. I think that, uh, yeah. that yes, thank you, Debra. You're, how, how if, if I may you ask, how have your students reacted to being able to be a part of this uh, today. What, what's the feeling from your classroom right now? First, it was disbelief. They kept asking if it was a game. And I said, no, this is live. She really is there. And we are really talking to people from all over the place. And once they kind of understood what it was about, it was a sense of stunned silence that this is really happening. They're really speaking to someone in a way that is real, yet in a second world kind of situation. And it was this whole new um, exploration of technology at the same time moving to a sense of closeness in a way that we, they couldn't have otherwise experienced. That's a, extremely well said. Thank you, Deborah. Yes, it's remarkable how much humanity really comes through um, this platform. Um, thank you. I, I wanted to at this point, open up the uh, the forum a bit and ask if there was anybody in the audience who had any questions or or comments. I'm going to quote Fanny, um, someone from the audience, Valiant Westland, uh, who's I believe in Michigan right now, and he is quoting Edmund Burke by saying, "All that is necessary for the triumph of evil is that good men." do nothing. And someone in the audience was wondering um, about inhuman experiments that were conducted on people during the time uh, of your being in the concentration camp that you were aware of. And I, I, I hesitate to ask this, but it's, it's something that that people want to know because it just brings home sort of the horror of of the Holocaust. I should answer it. I just asked you a question about uh, experiments. Huh? Experiments in the camp. Oh, the experiments in the camp. You know, and uh, Poland was uh, the Auschwitz. And over there was in a small town called Halinka. Over there was all experience made. Like Hitler want blue eyes and blonde hair, castration, and so on and so forth. Was many. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I just cannot answer it no more because mm. it's just that they did so many things un beyond, un beyond. They made such experiments. Like my husband had a friend 
from his hometown was a young fellow. We met him in Bergen-Belden after the liberation, and he was experiment castrated. He was a broken human being. He was so broken, he, he said to me, fella, that man is shrinking every single day. They took away his dignity. They took away everything in his everything. life. And he had no family. So I invited him for Sabbath meals mm -hmm. and everything mm -hmm. else. So oh. what can I tell you? I will never forget him, and I will never forgive them. What they did to people. Why? No. No. Never. Never. No. And you, you can't ever forgive and you can't really ever, ever forget. And it's just a, a miraculous and, and wonderful thing for us that you are here, that you open your heart and open your soul and have the bravery, Fanny, to to talk about this to us. And I just want to ask you if you know where you where you get the bravery to be able to speak to us in this honest and and magnificent way. Because we are all of us made better for People. having listened to you. Mm. Yeah. I don't know myself <laughs> how I got my bravery. One thing when I was so oh, about two, three years ago, so deadly sick, and then I said, my doctor asked me how I am. I said, I am sick. Hitler didn't kill me. You make a lot of damage on my body. Mm. He almost, they almost put me away, you know. I was flatlined. And after that, I woke up after three weeks in intensive care. Oh. And I said to the doctor, you know what? I have still a big mission to accomplish with my Helen. So I put myself together, Try. In the beginning, I didn't want to get dressed. I didn't want to eat. And Helen starts screaming, eat. And I just said, Helen, I can eat that much. And I just took me a while. I just start dressing myself, put makeup on myself, <laughs> and get out in the house. And I said, I have to go on. I have to tell still the truth, tell the people in the world what how cruel human people can be to each other. Even today, you see it so much crying, like people, mm -hmm. killing people, unnecessary. It's a lot to talk about it. I think they should take for me lesson to be kind to each other. And and what lessons, Fanny and... In closing, I know you've been you've been speaking to us for a long time, and we so appreciate it. What lessons do you think that we have to move forward into the future, into the new decade, into into our lives and our humanity with? What is that? Care. What is that lesson? Caring, care for each other, give a hand in help for each other. Let's stop the nonsense wars mm -hmm. and the maniacs. What are creating the wars? Well, that's very, very well said, and I wish that our world leaders had a chance to hear you speak and that they understood what a failure. It is on all fronts for there to yeah. be. I tell you today in politics, like uh, I heard it on the news, uh, 
you know, between the Republicans and the Democrats makes me ill. How they're bickering against each other. They don't blame who made the damage for the country. They're blaming that men who took over a sick government mm -hmm. and try and to take a while to repair it. It's not overnight. It took a year. In one year, you cannot see that borrowed so much money, but we could use it for our education and our people with the homeless and without the jobs. I think you are very right about that, and that in in using uh, funds for education and for for building and for humanitarian causes will help us as a people, help us as a population, and stop and stop killing and leeching and unnecessary violence and bloodshed. Bunny you you are wonderful and you are a national treasure you are a world treasure and we are going to say thank you and thank you to our audience and thank you to everyone who is here today who listened who spoke and of course great thanks to fanny star thank you my name is pookie amsterdam and this was the document of time Part two. Thank you, Fanny. Thanks, Cookie. Nice talking to you. Again. Thank you. Of course.